Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Carl Davis. I'm the executive director here at Crow Shadow Institute of the Arts, located on the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending uh, today's talk with Fox Spears, a recent artist in residence at Crow Shadow. Uh, I will um, just a couple housekeeping things first before we really get started. Uh, we are going to record this talk uh, so that we can um, put it up on our YouTube link later and then share it with more people as they want to view it. Um, uh, so if you don't mind, please uh, mute your mics during the discussion. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the raise your hand feature or put your question to chat and we'll answer those questions as we go along. Um, this is going to be a fairly informal discussion between myself and Fox, but um, you know, if you have if you have thoughts or questions, feel free to um, to jump in too. Uh, I want to first thank the Cayuse, the Walla Walla, uh, and Umatilla peoples of the Confederate Tribes of Umatilla, um, their stewardship and um, sorry, I lost my <laughs> speech here. Their stewardship of the land, the air, and the water we breathe, uh, and thank you for letting us be on uh, on their land. Uh, I also want to thank the Board of Directors of Crow Shadow uh, for their time and effort and expertise um, over the years. And I also want to thank the staff of uh, Crow Shadow, Judy Bauman, our master printer, Maggie Middleton, her assistant, doing two things at once here, uh, Sequoia Connor, our uh, traditional arts coordinator, Ella uh, Mara Ketelar, managing our uh, uh, marketing manager, and our volunteer extraordinaire Sandra Westford for all of her time. I also want to thank the donors and funders of Crow Shadow that helped make all of this possible, including um, uh, the Roundhouse Foundation, the Ford Family Foundation, and many other uh, private and uh, government uh, agencies that help us uh, bring Native and Indigenous peoples to Crow Shadow. Uh, it's my distinct pleasure today to be welcoming and talking to Fox Spears. Uh, he's a recent uh, artist in residence at Crow Shadow. Uh, he's been here a number of times over the years uh, through a couple different programs, starting with uh, the PNCA Continuing Ed Program, and then as a, a, a private artist uh, working in the studio with a, a group of other uh, like-minded folks renting the studio on a, a regular basis throughout the years. Uh, Fox has been an amazing person to have here. Um, he was wonderful working in the studio uh, with those folks, but also the fact that we uh, wanted to bring him back as an artist in residence for a number of years has uh, been really um, a, a goal of mine. So I was really happy that we were able to do it this year. Fox has a BFA uh, from the Cornish College of Arts. And he has attended programs at uh, the Institute of American Indian Arts and the Pilchuck Glass School. Uh, he's received uh, a number of awards, including the National Native Creative Development Grant from the Longhouse at Evergreen State College, uh, an Emerging College Artist Grant from the Smithsonian National Museum of American Indian. Uh, he has done uh, a number of exhibits across the country, including at the Ink People Center for the Arts in Eureka, California. Uh, at the Godini Gallery in Humboldt State University in Arcata, California, the Space Works Gallery in Tacoma, Washington, and many others. Uh, he also has an upcoming exhibit at the Shen Gallery in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, has had commissions with foundations and other um, private businesses. We're going to talk a little bit about that, uh, that work that he's done um, all over the country. Originally lived in Seattle for most of his life, but now is in Orlando, Florida. So welcome, Fox. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to let you introduce yourself too, but uh, you know, if you have anything um, that you want to add to that long list, uh, feel free to, to, uh, to <laughs> tout yourself some more. Oh, gosh. Um, I, I'm never crazy about having attention. Um, <laughs> um, that all sounded pretty accurate. I did grow up in and around Seattle, so that was my um, home for most of my life. Um, until this past May when we moved to Florida uh, my, with my husband where he is from. So we purchased a house here. So that's been a big change. Um, I'm also an enrolled member of the Crook tribe, um, which is on the Klamath River in Northern California. Nope, sorry, my phone is doing things. Um, yeah, that's that's probably, probably the only other thing I'd mention. <laughs> 
So uh, to kind of start, uh, just to let people know, we're going to talk a little bit about Fox's time here in studio, about his residency, about uh, his practice, and how that might have been um, influenced by uh, his time at Crow Shadow. Uh, but do you want to talk a little bit about your your history as an artist, like where where that kind of comes from, and and uh, how it's I think I I think it's evolved over years in 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 your yeah. practice. Yeah, um, so I ended up uh, going back to college 10 years after I graduated from high school. Um, I had just been doing a variety of things and I, I'd wanted to go to Cornish uh, back when I graduated from high school and just it didn't seem possible. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this happen. Um, but at the time I was like, well, I feel like, you know, design seems like it's a combination of the creative and the practical. So maybe that's, maybe that's like a, a better thing to pursue or like it's more, uh, more practical, I guess. So um, I did attend Cornish. I have a BFA in design with an emphasis in interior design. Uh, but while I was in school, I really gravitated much more towards art by the time I by the time I graduated. Um, and I think the the biggest the biggest influence um, on what really started me thinking about um, art more specifically, and I think contemporary Native art, uh, was a summer between my freshman and sophomore year when I was um doing an internship at the cooper hewitt design museum in new york and i saw work um in an exhibit called off the map at the national museum of the american indian uh, satellite that they have there uh, at the george gustav high center i believe um it included work with by james lavador which is how i first like i was like oh i mean there was so much amazing work erica lord um Emmy Whitehorse, Jeffrey Gibson, the stuff is so was so different than what it is now. Um, so it, it just really was mind blowing to me, like seeing all of this work. Um, and the next summer I had is when I had attended a course at Pilcher Glass School, and that's when I first uh, did any printmaking in the vitriography studio. Fell in love with it. Knew I needed to do more printmaking immediately. Um, and you would think I would have done that at Cornish, and no, I did not. Um, <laughs> but I remembered when I had read about James Lavador about Crow's Shadow, and I was like, oh, that's not that far away. So it was always kind of in the back of my mind. And then um, my senior year, or maybe freshman year, I don't remember anymore. Uh, what is time? Um, is when I, I finally was like, okay, I need to go down there. So actually the first thing I came down for was a monathon event in 2009. And then in 2010, I did um, come to um, my first PNCA workshop, um, which was phenomenal. And that just kind of, it went from there. So really, really I'd say Crow's Shadow and, and the continuing time that I've uh, come down there and spent time working on my art has been foundational for me as an artist. Um, it's been kind of the the thing that I've always done. <laughs> so. <laughs> so how how does your time uh, as an artist in residence differ from your time coming uh, as a solo art? You know, I, I don't know how to describe it as an independent artist uh, working on your your own work. Yeah, um, it's very different. I see a couple folks that I recognize from shop or workshops and or like studio rentals. Hello. Um, it was really, it was really weird being there by myself. So I'm so used to being there with a group of other people. <laughs> um, so that was kind of strange. Um, also, I really got to spread out, like just like, ah, use all the tables and put everything everywhere. Um, it, it, uh, oh gosh, I, I'm trying to think like really how to describe it. I think my process, like I kind of have down what I do with my monotypes now. So I'm pretty self-sufficient. So even though I really could spread out more, I probably didn't as much as I, I could have. And I think since I don't, um, since my printmaking time is usually uh, restricted to when I'm able to spend time in other studios. So at Crow's Shadow, that's been uh, the main place where I've done a lot of work. Um, I tend not to do too much of it outside of that. So there's always a little bit of time kind of like, oh, right, like, what am I doing again? Like, how do I do this again? What, what's my process? Um, and so, that that was there, but there were there were less people to kind of talk to because I'm kind of used to like oh what are, you know how are you doing what's what's up what are you working on like all that type of stuff um, so it, and it was wonderful <laughs> and this is the first time you you worked with, with Litho specifically is that right yes yes that was also very different um, so we ended up doing um, some litho backgrounds first and then I was doing my monotypes over them so there's a few series of monoprints that I made and then we were working on two um, litho editions one of which we ended up scrapping 
because really I feel like I feel like it ultimately it wanted to be a monoprint. It didn't want to be a litho. Um, but the other one I'm really thrilled about and um, isn't necessarily shown in the images here. Um, but I really appreciated that Judy helped me kind of elevate my work and my idea. It would have been very simple. I was kind of thinking of, oh, we can have, you know, do this, this type of a background and have some sheen clay elements. And she's like, okay, well, we're going to do this. And now I'm blanking on what she was on, on the actual term for it. Um, anyway, um, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to have you actually like, we're not going to just print these digital things and sheen clay them on. You're going to draw them. Um, so, you know, then it's like, oh, okay, I'm drawing all the layers on the light table of the CMYK image. And um, it, it was just really fascinating getting to do that type of stuff. Um, and I think also kind of, you know, I, I, still, I still don't feel like I understand lithography super well. Um, so it was really amazing getting to see her and Maggie working on those pieces together, um, seeing things as they developed and, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard for me sometimes to call myself a printmaker because I feel like I just kind of picked up and figured out whatever it is I'm doing. I don't really have formal, any formal training I've gotten in printmaking was, you know, probably from Frank Jansen when I first started coming down, um, as well as just, you know, talking to other artists while I've been there at different um, uh, classes or workshops um, or studio rental time um, and just kind of playing around. And I think what I love about printmaking is so much of the discovery element, you know, it's like, I never know quite what's going to happen. You, you, you know, you just don't know until you lift the paper up and you're like, oh, okay. And then it's like, can I replicate that? Mm, maybe. <laughs> um, do you, my, and do you, do you have a plan when you're going into a monotype that you have, um, you have certain layers that you want to build up or, or uh, work on, or is it just, it really is just kind of a play by ear as you go? I usually, so this time is a little different in that I, I oftentimes will work with um, crook basketry designs as an element. And this time I really felt like the, that background um, design was kind of what I came in thinking like, okay, I wanna work with this. And it's, it's obviously inspired by Louis Vuitton. It's like the Louis Vuitton monogram, but I took out the LV logo and was using acorns instead. Um, acorns being a food of the, um, and so, um, I, I really used that as kind of the, the graphic element instead of uh, basketry designs. And then I knew I was gonna kind of layer some of these landscape elements over, but I didn't necessarily know exactly what they were gonna be. Um, I was definitely wanting to work with mountains. Last, all last year, most of my projects, I was doing things with mountains and so I'm like, I need to do mountains. Um, but some of it, it's, it's also very much kind of like, well, what wants to happen? I think. I think, you know, when I started and I'm always like, okay, I'm going to use all these different paper colors and we're going to do these litho backgrounds in red and blue and then some in red and blue. Um, you know, now I'm kind of like, oh, well, it might have been nicer if I'd focused on one paper color and maybe one background color, you know, could have been easier for me. Um, <laughs> but also it was, it was fun to just sort of play and see what did happen. Um, and I also am, you know, very much a scavenger. So it's not like, you know, I, I think I kind of directed like, okay, let's use this red and this blue. And um, they could have pushed back at <laughs> me a little more because I think they were like, oh, well, these ones are kind of hard to, you know, these are a little more challenging. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, but like the inks that I was using for the building up the monotype layers over those, um, you know, I'm usually using found inks. I, I like digging through and kind of seeing what's there. I tend not to like mix my own colors that often unless there's something I'm really looking for that I can't find. Um, I like to, I like to dig around in the boxes, see what, you know, what's left over from maybe past editions or other artists that have been there or colors that they tried and didn't like um, and kind of put together a palette that way, so. And is this the first time you've done the, a, a mono print? Cause so you've worked monotype. And so if, if, you, if you don't know the, uh, what that is, there's, there's a monotype is completely unique. And in the mono print, there's a repeated element. And this, the, the um, Louis Vuitton, style background or or pattern that's that's repeated so you, they printed that in litho a number of times either on on a fresh piece of of sheet of paper or did you monotype and then they print ever print on top of that they were all um they did all of those first so they did okay. all those backgrounds there is one that actually uh 
you know what, there's one in there that maybe, no, I think it ended up in one of the monotypes. There was one where I did also put a piece of paper just over one of the fresh ones or, or you know, offset printed it off of maybe the, um, the newsprint that they'd run through first. Um, but for the most part, yeah, they did all of those first and then it's like, okay, I'm gonna start building up my layers. Um, I think there's, well, this, this image is actually, um, so I work with torn paper a lot too. Um, I also often, I didn't this time, but I often will cut out paper stencils, sometimes newsprint, sometimes something heavier like Bristol, um, but I was just using a lot of torn paper. These are, this is just kind of a little thing I put together because I always love how things, um, how the newsprint picks things up too. So I was saving all these pieces of the torn newsprint that were, you know, I was using to mask different areas off um, and really loving the, the colors and what was happening on those. And so I sort of built this little temporary, <laughs> because obviously it's not archival, this little temporary um, landscape that I photographed. Um, and actually that next, the next image, so this is just one of the monotype plates um, that I was using and you can see there's, you know, various ink on there. I tend to work with ghosts a lot. So um, like looking at that, I'm kind of like, oh, there's still, there's still some spots with some ink on there that might come off. Um, and, and that's where I just tend to like to keep, keep running stuff through. Like I would maybe ink something up um, and run it through, I don't know, five to 10 times to get like, yeah, every, everything off. <laughs> you can see the offset too on, on this as well, like very faint, but at the top, what looks clear, but if you look closely, there's the offset of the inks onto that plate. So that would come back onto the next, you uh, onto the next ghost or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, that's interesting that, and it, watching you work too, I think um, from your previous work in the studio with monotyping, um, I remember you did a lot of stencils, a lot of cut paper that you would then use as masks to do different layers. And so I saw that happening here, but a lot of times, um, I, yeah, you, you were really just building up um, that image and you can kind of see it in, in, in this, the, the print that you're signing. This is a monotype itself, but oops, that, um, yeah, you can see how, how much you've built up over um, that, over that period, but even in um, the kind of middle section of this print that the, the pattern fades away because uh, you blocked that off when they were printing the litho, is that right? Oh, yes, yes. So there were some also where, um, you know, then it was like, oh, well, what happens if we just like throw a piece of torn paper over this when you're doing the litho? So there were a few that, you know, did have sections that were blocked off. Um, and then I also, would take the torn paper that um, was masking those off. And I used that, I think, on the smaller set of, um, of um, monotypes I did. Uh, oh, so what you used to mask off that center part of the, the this print became part of, where'd it go? Part of this collage, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, but it could have. No. It's more. Okay. Um, I think, <laughs> Basically, if, if there's anything that looks like it has wet ink on it, I'm like, oh, I can throw that on a piece of paper and run it through the press. Um, <laughs> so, like, I made a ton of, like, these tiny little things. I, I just, I cannot, like, I'm like, there's still good ink on there. Um, <laughs> so, so I think um, sometimes that means that I end up making too much, <laughs> in a sense, or I, I start a lot, like, oh, I'm going to start all these things. It's like, okay, rein it in. We need to finish things, too. Okay. What so this this time? I mean, you mentioned like being in the studio with a number of, of uh, other artists who are also working on their on their own thing, and you you do talk to each other about your work and and bounce ideas off each other. How does that differ than working with a collaborative master printer like Judy and and Maggie? Like, is there a different um, different approach or different um, like attitude in some ways for, on from me from that process? Yeah, I think. Um you know, when there's other people working and, and making pieces at the same time, you're looking at what they're doing. You're, you know, I, I think sometimes I'll get ideas like I'm like, ooh, that color is really great. Can I borrow a little bit of that? Or I might see a technique someone's using where I'm like, oh, I could do something like that. Like, how would I maybe use something like that in my work? Um, or even, even if it's not something that actually affects the work, it may be just what you're thinking about, um, seeing what someone else is doing, like what's their subject matter, um, just, you know, it's, it's kind of casual, more of this free flow type of thing. Um, working with Judy um, and Maggie um, was really great in that 
I mean, it was very different, but it was, it was also really great in that I think, you know, if I had questions about things, um, or if I'm like, well, there's this, this thing that I'm thinking about, like, how might I achieve this? Um, you know, they certainly have the knowledge um, or knowledge that I don't have um, to be able to help me achieve that. Um, so that's where I think the litho that, um, that we're working on. And th so this piece does show um, one of them. So, so the, the litho is a background also still working with um, a modified version of the Louis Vuitton background. It's made to look a little more like like it's in brown and gold, so it references that a little more directly. And then it has these um, different, you know, vintage luggage stickers that are on it. So that one I had found, it's from like 1925 or 1930, somewhere in there, and it was for Western Air Express. And in Photoshop, I changed it so it's Western Res Express. That one was easier because it was just a single color one. Um, there was also this Welcome to Oregon one that we did in CMYK. Um, and then I, there's another one that wasn't modeled after an actual one, but I kind of put it together that's for Paris. Um, I think this is, you can kind of see it in this image. The, oh yeah, that's the Eiffel Tower one yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that piece I think is really different from most of my printmaking in that it's very, you know, usually, usually my printmaking, I'm like doing all this really organic stuff, you know, or, or organic combined with geometric. There's a lot of ghosts, like again, I. I love like, like how much ink can I get off that plate? Um, you know, like, can I put the pressure up more or is this gonna be too dangerous and the plate might crack? Um, I don't really do that as much anymore. Um, but I, I will say I did, I did crack a plate with uh, Frank for sure. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. So, so the litho edition I'm really excited about because it it's, it's just very different from what I've done before, but also, you know, it was a way to really, it's nothing that I probably could have done on my own um, I, it's just, you know, it's not a, the technical skills that I have or the type of printmaking I do. Yeah. Um, so I, I am thrilled that I was able to make a lot of work that feels very much like the type of work I make. And then also something that feels a little new and different too. Um, so do you think in some ways that that collaborative process, do you, do you feel that that was, you know, a positive aspect or, and how, how would you incorporate that and in, back into your own work then? Or is that something that you'll just set aside and, and continue doing your own work separate? I think, um, I think it definitely is something that will affect my other work. Um, I think, uh, you know, I'd, I'd made, I don't know that I have images of it, but I'd made a, a drum. Like I don't make a lot of 3D objects, but I'd made a drum and it incorporated some Louis Vuitton pieces in it. Um, and so that's kind of where I've been thinking about this Louis Vuitton idea, thinking about, and I, I originally did that thinking about like wealth building and what that meant for my tribe traditionally, and then thinking about what that means in contemporary uh, times. This is kind of going away from the question, I guess. <laughs> um, but I was, um, I, I think it's more something where I, I really like collaborating with people. Um, so I found that really fun. You know, Judy was very respectful. She's like, you know, your monotype process is your thing. She's like, I don't necessarily want to, you know, add my chop mark to something if it's really yours. And I'm like, mm, this is all collaborative. Like, you're absolutely helping me. And um, she ended up not on the monotype series I did, which still, I feel like she could because it includes some, like, offset um, pieces of this design from the litho, but none that were made specifically for it. And that those were all smaller ones. Um, but definitely this, you know, like I, I couldn't have done something quite like this on my own. I, or if I did, it would have been extremely tedious and I would have been like cutting paper forever and um, it just wouldn't have been the same. <laughs> In terms of um, your your general practice though too, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, installation work that you've done. Um, your your work is it it scales so beautifully it it does have kind of a kind of an infinite approach in some ways um the geometric abstraction is is very relatable and uh it's organic in a way that like humans can relate to it on multiple scales uh how did you find this pieces prior to your time at crow shadow but um i feel like there's there's some elements of your monotype in this process and, and do you want to talk about a little bit about this and maybe the, yeah. the, the process for this as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, so a uh, curator with Facebook or Meta as it's now known, um, Meta Open Arts, um, had reached out to me about potentially doing something at one of their locations. Uh, they 
they're working with a lot of artists to kind of fill a lot of their spaces with art, which is really exciting. Um, and I was kind of like, well, I don't know. I, I think for me also, I'm very much like, well, what do you want? And it was just so open. It's like, well, what do you want to do? Um, and I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know. Like, I have no idea what I want to do. Um, so I kind of went through a few different iterations of things. I landed on the idea of this, but I think I was also still kind of struggling with, well, how do I, you know, I didn't necessarily want to go in with an idea fully formed and be like, okay, this is exactly what I'm gonna, you know, here's this piece of art and I'm just gonna do it larger on these walls. Um, but I certainly didn't wanna just go in and wing it either. Um, I did end up hiring um, uh, Lena Cholowinski from Overall Creative, who they do a lot of murals in Seattle. Very helpful. Um, she really helped me figure out kind of some of the materials and, and methods of maybe what would work best. Um, and then it was kind of like, okay, I have this general idea, like this is what it'll be on this wall, this is what'll be on that wall. Um, I, I think it, it really came together for me when I started thinking about, well, how would, I, how would I approach this if I were doing a print? Like if I was making a monotype print, what would I do? Um, and I was really like, oh, okay, well, I just need to figure out what my ink colors are. I need to figure out what the elements are I'm gonna use and then just go in with that idea and then see how it develops. So it was, again, very much about layering. You know, we started with the lightest color and I think that was, I forget what brand paints we were using, but it was called Jersey Cream. I remember that. Um, and then like we had a, a blue that was indigo and the red was, I think it was called Real Red. And we really just had those three colors and then we would kind of mix them, um, mix them together to get the lighter colors. We also used some acrylic transparencies um, as well. And it was just kind of putting, putting them together. And, and I did use torn paper to mask off in some instances um, to get the, the more, yeah, you can see the torn paper there. Uh, was using kind of a, a big palette knife or maybe it was even just pieces of cardboard at times to sort of get that more uh, mixed uh, or not mixed. Um, I don't know, the, the pieces that are a little airier and you can see through them a little more. Um, so it was a little bit of experimentation. It was a little scary to approach this like stark white wall and be like, okay, let's mess it up. <laughs> um, but it was so much fun. Um, and I had been wanting to do something really large. I had done one other mural in the past that was not really, it was more just they, they took a piece of my work and kind of we, we did it based off of that. Um, so this was a lot more fun to do. It you know had these 3D elements, they're slightly 3D. So there's these triangles that were, um, MDF, we painted red. There are strips of felt on those. I did beading on some of the strips. Um, you know, this wall kind of just has them all running uh, together in one way. The other wall has sort of this larger grid um, that was based off of a cooking basket pattern. And on the other side of that is the cafe. So that felt kind of appropriate to me. Um, yeah, it, to me, this felt very much like a larger extension of my printmaking. Um, and and then the, you had another commission too. Is this is for a different uh, company too? Yeah, this was for Starbucks. Um, and I realized I didn't have the image of the six that they chose. So they had asked me originally for five prints um, that they would then. Oh, and this is my. <laughs> this was my original. I I did want to share this too. So this was my original concept, like my sketches of like, okay, they'd asked for six, uh, five prints, and I was like, you know, they said we may buy an extra one, you know, in case to make an even number. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do six ideas. And I was working with these um, different mountains and coffee growing regions. And so I came up with this like, oh, it's gonna be very specific. Like it'll be, you know, this type of mountain here and that type of mountain there. And these are the colors. And, um, and I was like, oh, also where am I gonna make these? Like it's the middle of the pandemic. Um, I ended up renting space from Sheila Coppola um, who has Sidereal Fine Art Press in Tequila, which she, normally had not done that before. She was very nice, very gracious. Um, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to her. Um, so this, this is in her studio, just I had them all, all up on the wall. So with my process, I tend to, you know, like I make a lot. So um, they're kind of arranged in a grid based on what I was doing. I forget exactly, but you, you know, you can tell like, I think two of them had red as a central color. Two of them had this very dark brown and two of them had this very dark green. There was also, I think it was Senefelder's gray that looks kind of like a sage green that I was using. Um, but I kind of had this limited palette. There were some of these geometric elements but they weren't necessarily the, the main thing. Um, and it was just kind of layering. I, I definitely approached it in a certain way where I'm like, okay, the, 
the bottom row you can tell has all of the mountains um, with the first inking and then I kind of ghosted them up from there. Um, anyhow, so Starbucks chose six of six of those and I forget which ones exactly. Um, and they're gonna be, or they're gonna be used for um, um, in new stores, like as the, as the designers are working on those, they can be reproduced um, to be installed there. And then they also were like, you know, what, what are we gonna do with the rest? I'm like, well, I don't know. Like technically, you know, with the contract, you kind of own them. I was like, I could destroy them or I could, you know, I, I can't really do anything else with them. Um, they're like, oh no, no. So they, they ended up purchasing those as well, which was really nice. It oh. used for um, corporate gifts or whatever. Everyone there was, was wonderful. It was really, it was really a fun project to work on. But I, again, it was this one of, you know, I kind of went in with these ideas of like, well, how am I going to make this work? And, um, you know, from my original concepts when I was first in the studio and like trying to make these very literal things, um, it wasn't working. Um, and then it's like, okay, like, let's start, let's get out of my head. Let's like work from my heart. Um, and once I kind of loosened up and was like, well, what do I usually do? Like, they're not hiring me to like, do the cerebral thing they want me for the kind of work that I do um I felt like it all kind of came together at that point which was which was really exciting so yeah do you, those do are you some think... of the mountains I was working on that. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that the that experience of of commissioned work uh has like how, how do you feel that that works with something like collaborative printmaking or or working on your own like I I, I feel like there's a, a moment of of people coming to Crow Shadow to do collaborative work with Master Printer, and they feel like they're, you know, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth or any artist's mouth, but you know, there's there tends to be an idea of um, not forced creativity, but like pressure to create, and that's mm -hmm. something we try to like pull away from. The artists here are here to explore something on their own or or work through an idea, um, you know it's great that we end up with publishable, publishable prints at the end, um, but that, you know, we try not to uh, dictate like what exactly they'll be creating. And so something like a, a commission where they say, we want six images and they're, they're gonna be this size and, and incorporate, you know, a specific color palette. Do you, do you find there's a difference in that and how you reacted? I think, you know, they actually were very open. The, the commissions I've had have been very free and open. And I think any restrictions that have felt restrictive have been ones in my own head <laughs> that I put on myself. Um, I, it, does feel, it does feel comparable in a way to coming to Crow's Shadow. Um, I think it's, it's like there's this like underlying bit of guidance, um, but also there's a lot of freedom. Um, I, I think um, I think my experience could be different, you know, with Crow Shadow versus some artists in that I do, you know, I do kind of have a printmaking technique that I like to use and tend to use. Um, and I think, you know, Judy was extremely respectful of that and definitely was wanting, you know, was wanting things to feel like my work. The second litho that we ended up abandoning, you know, it's just like, okay, well, you know, we want this to feel like your stuff. It was gonna be a little more like my monotypes. Um, and I don't know, like if we if I'd started that one earlier, maybe it would have worked out well, or you know. But it just it was like mm, this just isn't quite quite right. But it's you know, it, I think it was really fun for both of us. I think she she let me know she kind of enjoyed trying some new things um, on her on her end. You know, like well, let's see how this works and can this be done. Um, and you know, some things worked really well and they were really great. And some things it's like well. Mm, Maybe not those, but that's okay. Like it was fun to try and, and do. Um, and it's still like that print is still an idea in my head that I'm like, well, I could certainly still do it again in the future at some point um, collaboratively, or I could try to work on it. You know, I think this has made me think a lot about painting um, and where I'm like, oh, I, I you know, like I, I'm just like needing to do more. Um, Cause mo most of the time when I was coming to Crow Shadow, you know, I was working full time. And so since I've, been able to not um, not work full time in a non art job um, for the last couple of years. It's been really freeing, and also it's like, oh, I have the time, so that's not an excuse anymore. <laughs> so. um, well, uh, thank you. So, speaking of time, uh, I kind of wanted to see if anybody in the audience had any questions for you, and 
um, maybe we can um, uh, answer those and 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 wrap up. Um, so yeah, so th this is the time now. If you have any questions for Fox, uh, feel free to jump in or raise your hand or type it in chat. Um, uh, in the meantime, do you want to talk about any upcoming projects that you have going on or um, any exciting news that you might have? I know you were here, you went up to Walla Walla one day to meet with the Foundry folks there. And Yes, I have um, a public art project um, in Seattle that I'm working on still that probably wouldn't think it would probably be installed like in 2025. So it's, it's a ways out. Um, but it's in a new development um, on Rainier and 23rd, a little north of 23rd. Um, that's been really fascinating. Also, like a completely new, new process and 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 type of way of working. <laughs> uh, I have. Uh, it's funny. Like I moved, and I still have all these things in Seattle. Um, so there's another uh, project I'm working on with a high school in Seattle for a land acknowledgement mural. Um, which I'm excited about. I think that'll be really fun. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. I have lots of, I have lots of, um, lots of ideas for things that I'm wanting to do. I'm really wanting to do more bead work. Like I did a little bit of it in that mural, but I have, I have ideas for um, some maybe more, not necessarily traditional, but. Um, Smaller scale, like not sure. on the wall. <laughs> not we we did have a question that came in the chat. So <laughs> Stephanie asked, do these organizations, well, first she said wonderful work. So thank you. Uh, do these organizations come to you with a budget or do you have to determine how to price the work to ensure that you're paid fairly? Um, that is a wonderful question. Um, so I'd say I feel really lucky in that all of these opportunities that I was sharing, people came to me about them. Um, so they did come, they're like, you know, this is kind of our uh, approximate budget. Um, maybe the Facebook meta one didn't say specifically, but there was, you know, some talk back and forth and it's like, okay, like here's a general idea. Um, so that's been nice where I haven't had to worry so much about that. I have for this more recent um, uh, piece uh, or this more recent um, mural that I'm, project that I'm working on, you know, they were like, oh, well, you know, what, what would that cost? What's your fee? And I'm like, oh gosh, I haven't really had to think about that. So that, that's something I'm definitely like, oh, how, how, do I, how do I price this? How do I value my time and the effort? And I have to really start thinking more about, um, you know, well, how much time does it take? What do I anticipate I will be spending on this um, in time and, and or materials? Um, but yeah, those, I feel really lucky about those, um, about those other opportunities where they were very generous and it was just kind of like here's this budget and we invite you to create some stuff so. <laughs> that's great um i had a question that i thought of while you're talking but now i can't remember it so i apologize <laughs> it um <laughs> yeah it yeah um does anyone else have any questions for fox about his time at crow shadow about his work in general yeah, I have a question. Hi, Fox. I'm Leslie. Um, I was just wondering, given your recent move to Florida, but also having all these kind of ongoing projects on the West Coast, I guess I don't know if you traveled a lot beforehand, but is this kind of this opportunity, if you want to look at it that way, to travel more and do art more across the, you know, across the U.S., North America, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about any more about that? I mean, if you're open and comfortable doing that, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Um my husband was very uh, nice in asking, you know, when we were talking about moving and, um, you know, we were wanting to buy a home, thinking about where we wanted to live. Certainly the Northwest is very expensive now. Um, and, you know, he's like, well, if we move to Florida, you know, are you okay with that? I feel like there are things happening with your, with your art career here. Um, and, you know, it's like, well, yeah, you know, there's stuff happening, but I also feel like I can, you know, I can do artwork most anywhere. And there also are potentially other opportunities, you know, and being on the East Coast, closer to New York, um, very, you know, various other places. So I'm, I look at it as an opportunity. I think it's, it still makes me laugh a little that I have all these things that are Seattle based. Um, and I did have a curator reach out to me about a commission that uh, was for something in Spokane. Um, and then, you know, it's like, just FYI, I am in Orlando now. <laughs> and they're like, let's check. And they're like, okay, our client wants people in the Northwest. And I was like, totally get that, you know, that's totally fine. Um, 
but you know, I, I think if any, I think for me, there's there's more opportunity, and I'm definitely open to open to open to seeing what else is out there. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Oh, oh go ahead. Gonna mention, I was just going to mention, I did have that drum that I talked about, which um, the National Music Museum purchased, and they're in, I'm blanking on the name of the city, but they're in South Dakota. And so they were like, oh, you know, would you be interested in coming to South Dakota for some, you know, and I'm like, I've never been to South Dakota before. So <laughs> sure, why not? Um, yeah. <laughs> Definitely and is that that's part of an exhibit that's going on right now or is that coming up um they are redoing their permanent galleries so I, my understanding is it's going to be um included in their permanent exhibit when it reopens um i don't have a lot of details on that i just i had it listed with stonington gallery in seattle and i knew it, it sold and then they reached out to me through my website and i was like oh you purchased it so that was really exciting and Definitely, yeah. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a show of crow shadow work at the Plains Art Museum in North Dakota, right? In Fargo, North Dakota. So, you know, it's a, a short drive, apparently. They're yeah. small states, right? Uh, <laughs> so Pam has, um, oh, she just mentioned, so she says, thank you so much, Fox. And you probably read this chat, so I don't know if I read it out loud. But thank you, Pam. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so the uh, mono prints that Fox worked on, uh, they're finished and signed and chopped, but we do have to photograph them and to get them on the website. And right now they are starting, the studio is getting underway with printing Natalie Ball prints. So there might be a little bit lag before we're, we have the mono prints on the wall, uh, on the website. And then the actual edition work um, that's, you know, now down the docket. So we have um, three other artists in, in front of, of uh, Fox's prints to, to get through. Not Natalie Ball and Deanne Whitehawk, um, Jim Labrador and um, uh, um, Lisa Jarrett are all kind of in line now to get done. <laughs> so it might be a while, probably in the spring of next year before we see the finished uh, edition work, but the mono prints will be done uh, very soon, relatively and on the website. Uh, so we'll let everyone know uh, via Instagram and newsletter and all that stuff when it, they come out. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and. I, I'm just going to kind of wrap up here too. Thank you everyone for, for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you Fox for, uh, for making the trip out to Crow Shadow uh, to the Northwest and, um, and, and being here it was such a wonderful time. And I think um, it was really special to have you back and uh, working as a, as a resident artist too. It was, it was really fun. Um, uh, so a little bit of more housekeeping. If you uh, aren't aware, we are hiring right now for development director. So uh, check out our website, uh, spread the word. We really want to hire uh, a really great development director. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, upcoming things are going to be happening. Uh, we have an annual report that we'll be pr uh, producing very soon and an online auction that's going to happen in November, uh, early in November. So keep an eye out for that um, coming up. And Fox has a piece he's so kindly donated to that too. So if you're interested in his work, check that out. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's time. Uh, again, we'll probably upload this to the website uh, and the YouTube uh, in the future. So if you want to revisit this talk or let people know about it, um, please share. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day. So thank you, Fox. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a dream. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.